Hey, what's going on everybody? It is Lou Bella with the Sideline Scoop. So today we have some more training camp news. I put out a video yesterday, sort of going over the first day, what was going on, some news that came out of there. You know, we talked about AJ Dillon's legs. Um, so if you want to, you know, hear more about his legs, make sure you go look at the other video. Um, his quads are massive, his calves are massive, you know, solid news. But today we have some more news out of Packers training camp. In today's video, I'm basically going to cover what happened, uh, on day two of training camp. So whenever you're watching this, that's sort of what this video is going to be about. You know, sort of going over some interviews, those kinds of things, some things I picked up from those interviews and some other news that has basically come out of Packers camp. All right, what is up everybody? I'm excited to put out this video, second video of training camp basically. And so the first thing I wanna get in is AJ Dillon. And today we're not talking about his legs. We were talking about AJ Dillon's receiving ability. And I think lots of people in this off season were wondering if AJ Dillon is a guy who can sort of catch the ball out of the backfield. Um, Cause if we take a look at his college stats right here, in his three years there, he ran the ball for 4,352 yards, but he only had 21 receptions and uh, around 230 yards. And so I think that people were wondering in three years, um, you know, playing college, why did AJ Dillon only catch the ball 21 times? So an average of seven times a year. You know, you, it could make you think that maybe he doesn't have that ability, you know, that they just didn't really want to utilize him in that way because he didn't have that skill set. Um, but I think when you sort of take a look at um, sort of how he did in the combine, Gutekun sort of talked about how in the combine, AJ Dillon sort of showed his ability to catch the ball and it was sort of an untapped ability. And so I sort of think that, um, you know, it's sort of in college, that offense that he was on, they just didn't really need to utilize him in that way. That offense wasn't sort of centered around AJ Dillon receiving the ball. And so LaFleur sort of talked about yesterday when they were asking him the question of, can like AJ Dillon receive the ball? Can he catch the ball? And he basically said that, you know, he has that ability to catch the ball. He's sort of seen it in the past couple days in training camp. He has the ability to reach out, to grab the ball, to catch it. And so I think there's no worries when it comes to AJ Dillon receiving the ball, you know, sort of from the news that has come out of training camp. And so even though maybe in college he wasn't utilized in that way, I think the Packers can utilize him in that way. I think he can sort of be a guy who can sort of do it all out of the backfield. Um, a big, solid 250 pound guy who can catch the ball, who can run the ball, who, who can sort of do it all. And uh, you know he's gotten some comparison to Eddie Lacy, which I guess is good. You know Eddie Lacy in his prime was uh, was a fun guy to watch, just just running over guys, and knocking them down. I think that um, I think that AJ Dillon can definitely do that. You know, because remember, like I mean, his legs. There's no way he can't plow over people continuously, just over and over and over and over. So that's the first thing I want to talk about um, in news. So AJ Dillon can catch a ball, don't you worry. And so the second thing I sort of want to touch on um, has to do with Aaron Rodgers. And I think that you know through this offseason, ever since Jordan Love was was picked, you know the media sort of talked about. They're sort of always going at Aaron Rodgers. We're sort of talking about how like uh, he's not a team player, you know, he doesn't want to be here, all these kinds of things. And you know, the, the truth is none of us are there. None of us really know what Aaron Rodgers is thinking unless he of course tells us. But anyways, um, coming out of the first couple days of training camp, when I was watching an interview with Tim Boyle, he's basically talking about Aaron Rodgers and how he's like more positive than he's ever been, more excited than he's ever been um, in this Packers training camp. And so I think that, you know, this media, the media basically has portrayed Aaron Rodgers as a sort of like villain, like he just isn't really a team player. But honestly, I don't think that's the case. Of course, I don't know everything, you know, I don't really know what's going on, but it seems that Aaron Rodgers is a guy who's gonna come in, he's gonna be a pro, he's going to come in and do what he's always done, going to produce for this Packers offense. And I think there's no worries about that. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to cover that a little bit in this video. And then the third thing, sort of looking at Tim Boyle and Jordan Love. And I think honestly, personally, I guess not thinking about it too much, I just sort of assumed Jordan Love would come in and you know, he'd just be the backup right away. I just didn't really think much about it. Um, because I think when you hear about, you know, Jordan Love being a first round pick, you know, all the talk about him replacing Aaron Rodgers, you just automatically think he was automatically the backup. But you know, of course, Tim Boyle is here and we can't forget about Tim Boyle. And so um, Tim Boyle, it's now gonna be his third year on this Packers team, his second year in his Packers system. And so I think that uh, when you look at that, he has a huge leg up over Jordan Love because he's had an entire year. He's had two years behind Aaron Rodgers to sort of learn, you know, all the things that you can learn from Aaron Rodgers, you know, being a great quarterback. And then of course now he's been in Lafleur's system for now one year. So now he knows all the plays, he knows all the things that are going on. And so he has a huge leg up on Jordan Love when it comes to that. You know, Lafleur is talking about Jordan Love. I mentioned a little bit in my video yesterday about how, you know, he, he has a lot to work on. He has a lot to improve on. And it's just because he's coming onto a new team his first year in the NFL, he's having to learn, you know, the entire system. He's going to have to, you know, think about all those things. So he's so much going through his mind. Whereas Boyle, you know, is a pro. He's a guy who's been here for a few years. He sort of knows what's going on. He knows the playbook. And so I think he might end up being a backup over Jordan Love. Who knows, maybe as the season progresses, Jordan Love will sort of get to that level. And who knows, maybe Jordan Love could even start as a backup. But it sort of seems right now to me that Tim Boyle um, will be the guy to be the backup quarterback. If we take a look at a, a quote right here from, um, from Boyle in his interview yesterday, he said, I feel comfortable. The terminology is coming to me. I'm definitely seeing the defense a lot smoother. Year two in the system, year three overall, obviously being behind 12 has helped me a bunch too. 
So as you can see, Tim Boyle has, um, you know, just gotten some experience these past couple of years, and I think that, you know, that sort of gives him a leg up over Jordan Love, at least right now. Um, at this point. All right, so the last thing I basically want to touch on today is Rashawn Gary. So people were sort of talking about how he looks a lot leaner coming into camp, um, but actually he's apparently a little heavier than last year. He's 276. Last year he was a little lighter, um, but it looks like he's just a lot leaner. So he's you know, been, eating, been eating well, been eating those healthy foods, and uh, been working out in this entire off season. Um, and then if we take a look at a, a quote from LaFleur right here, he says, you can never question how Rashawn goes after in his work, work ethic. He came back in phenomenal shape. And so I think that with Rashawn Gary coming into year two, after being picked in the first round last year. Uh, Mike Pettin has praised him this offseason, saying that he's a guy who looks like he can, you know, sort of become a better player, sort of, um, I guess, progress more um, coming into year two. I think that Rashawn Gary is going to be utilized a lot this year. Um, I'm not exactly sure how he will be, considering he's behind Zedarius and Preston Smith. Um, but I think that, you know, he's a guy who'll be exciting to watch in this upcoming season. And he also sort of talked about, Rashawn also talked about how last year coming in as a rookie, he was able to learn from Zadarius, able to learn from Preston Smith, and so that I think that you know that also will help him sort of basically just take a jump in year two. Let me take a look at a quote from him. He says yesterday in an interview, he said, "In terms of the scheme, the plays, and how I fit into it, I feel great. I feel like I'm at the point where it's just perfecting every play. It's not like learning it and getting it down. I know it, and now it's about making it effective and doing my assignment every play." So as I you know as I sort of covered a little earlier, Rashawn, he's basically he's picked up the playbook. He knows what's going on, and he's basically excited to come in and basically. Um, improve on his first year. And so that's basically what I want to cover in this video. Those are some of the, the key points that I sort of got from um, basically day two of training camp. And so if you guys want to see some more Packers content, I'll probably put out some more videos of, as the training camp continues to go on, some more some more news, some more developments in that area. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss that content. But I really appreciate you guys for watching this video and I'll see you guys on the next one.